Good afternoon to you all. Uh, as the set has been set, the day has been set for us. Now, first of all, I will read out our program for the day. Department of School Education, launching of virtual training for physical education teachers, funded by Samagra Shiksha Abhiyan Nagaland. Day date is today. Our time is 2.30. Venue is our those recording studio. I will do the leader. Speech will be given by our principal director, Sir Shanava CIS. After that, we will have a light program, just a brief program. After that, we will go with our uh, recording. So first of all, I thank Almighty God for giving us this beautiful day. And next, I welcome every one of you to our this program, especially to our principal director, to our director, our additional director, training officer, our assistant director, all the senior officers of the department. To start with, uh, under the guidance and initiative of our principal director and our director, under his leadership, our this section, physical education section of the department, through his initiation, we have planned some physical activities and based uh, physical activities for the students through Samaga, Samaga Shiksha. The purpose of this was for physical activities for the students, but the situation compels us to go with this. First, what we plan is that we have planned for physical activities for the students, but the condition did not allow us. Next, in the first week of May, May 5 to 7, we have set a training for our physical education teachers, but again, due to SOPs of our government, we could not able to have this. And as time compel us to have this training, where yeah, the last step we took is that we also, if as a section, like all the other section of the department, we would like to go for the virtual training. That is why as agreed by our uh, authority, we have initiated this one. So this initiation is, uh, so to say, I. I have got a privilege to say that we also could have been able to enjoy like other teachers who are in the class from the classroom. Likewise, our teachers also, this is a new thing for them. Likewise, we are also, all of us also are going to be uh, experience a new uh, era. So likewise, uh, who, whoever us are here, we all are going to be a part of the history of this department. Uh, along with this, uh, I just want to highlight is that along with this training, uh, though physically we cannot able to reach our physical education teachers in the school, but along with this training, right after training, we will be issuing our daily needs of our physical items, say like uh, measuring tape, stopwatch, and then whistle, as we always need. So we will be supplying those to all our physical education teachers who are in the field. So for this, we have choose the right, I think we have choose the right resource persons and for the right decision, uh, for the right uh, disciplines. So I think through this, we can able to, uh, our group of employees also will be benefited from it. Uh, the need of the hours of this virtual training is that after every major events, say like uh, World Cup, European Cup, or Olympic or Asian Games, now, we are lucky that uh, this Olympic game is going on. So likewise, during this time of things, we used to get uh, changes of rules and regulations. So based on that, we have, as agreed by our authority, we, have, we just want to highlight some of the latest changes been taken in this in the different discipline. So I welcome you all to this program. And then with that speech, I, and now I will give time to our principal director for a speech. And besides that, if uh, after his speech, if anyone can, uh, can take the time, and after that, 
I will introduce our resource person for this session. Thank you, Mr. Witzule, Director, Additional Director, all the officers from the Physical Education section and the other officers from the Directorate. And the resource persons, grateful to all of you to have come here to help us. Uh, see, nowadays the uh, discussion in many Naga social media groups also and in the newspaper is that why there is not a single Olympian from Nagaland. So we think about this only when the Olympic comes. We think we don't have a national or international football player when the World Cup comes. And we think we don't have a badminton player when the badminton tournament comes in the international level. This all has to start in the childhood, in the, during their school days. We all do play something. I can see many of my uh, colleague players also here. We play badminton. But we are playing for our health. We are playing for fun. Because we picked up this game after the age of 20, 25. Or even later than that also. So that is different. But when you want to create the professional athletes in the international national platform, that nurturing has to happen in the school level. And this nurturing is to be done Basically, it has to start with the physical education teachers of our schools. Unfortunately, in Nagaland, we have only around 270 physical education teachers. It's very less. And out of those 270 also, even being the head of the department, I am very doubtful to say how many will be actually performing their duty, how many are fit to perform their duty. We, I come from Kerala, a state. So we have the school games in the school level first and the winners will go to the subdivisional level and th then they go to the district level it's not only in the sports even in the arts festivals rather then they go to the state level the school games means each and every athletics all the other games are also there then the competition start from the school level the healthy competition the discipline start from the school level we have talented youth talented players even in Nagaland I've seen uh, players playing badminton or uh, football and other games also. See, I'm not generalizing when I say this, but somewhere down the line, the discipline is lacking in our athletes. You play a game, set out, three, four hours, you continuously play, play well. Then we hardly venture out of the state. We hardly go out of the state and see the competition outside. So those players you are playing against, if it's badminton, you keep playing against them only throughout your lifetime. So there is no outside competition you are exposed to. There is no outside competition you are going into a different state, a different country. Few people, very few players go in the uh, national international level from Nagaland. But they just keep, they are in the comfort uh, zone of Nagaland and they are so, so comfortable they don't want to go out. And there is no discipline. You play a game. And after evening, you have a party, you chill out. There is no discipline in your life also. So being an athlete, sometimes even I, I see, we, we are sitting here clearing some examinations, we got our jobs. But being an athlete, and that too in a national, international level is much more dedication is needed than being uh, to clear an examination. Because that is a lifelong discipline and routine you have to follow. You do training, you do listen to your coach and you take training from your coach and it's like a worship. If you see Olympics and uh, as Vitsula right, rightly pointed out, this is the right time when you have the Olympics going on. If you see the Olympics, the athletes wait for a lifetime moment for 4-5 years. They train for 4-5 years just to participate in that event and perform. And if they are not able to perform, it comes after the next four years. By that time, new athletes, young athletes are into the field again. So that is the level of competition we have. And it's okay for us to keep playing for fun in this badminton court or anywhere nearby. That is okay. But if you want to nurture athletes and don't creep about, we don't have Olympians, we don't have Olympians, the government is not doing anything. So I'm not telling that government is totally supportive also. It, it is a collective responsibility. We Start from the school level, give the nurturing, give the training and the government also has to support simultaneously. It has to go hand in hand. So anyway, coming back to our topic, we were planning this training to be a very face-to-face -face training. 
it was to happen in the month of April or May, but we couldn't because of the lockdown and the prevailing situation. But anyway, now we have to do it virtually, but I just appeal to the organizers, Bitsole and other colleagues, that make sure each and every teacher participate in this. Virtual has its own disadvantages. You can always switch off your video, mute your mic and do whatever you want. So insist on switching on the videos when you do this training, when they attend it. And uh, get an update after the training, what did they learn? Okay, we, you get a report from each and every teacher, what did they learn? Get back to us, write to us, so that we will evaluate and they perform and they do their duty. It's not for the namesakes. Now we have a studio, we do some recording and give it. Then our job is done. Uh, whatever money is sanctioned, we utilize. That is not the purpose. We have to be serious about it. Not because the Olympics is going on, we have to be serious about it every day. And that is our job, being a physical education teacher. Even we all had our physical education teachers during our school days and we were looking forward to the kind of a training they give us. So the job is as equal as subject teacher. Sometimes people feel that physical education teacher is not a mainstream subject. There is no not going to be any evaluation or marking at the end of class 10, 12. We take it very lightly. But a healthy mind always resides in a healthy body. So our body should be healthy, fit. So we have to teach our children, we have to show our children. So it is a uh, duty and responsibility of the physical education teachers to show them the path. If we are so undisciplined and into all practices like drinking and smoking and not doing our duty, then tell the children you go, be, you, you be fit, then we are not worthy of saying it when we are not practicing it ourselves. So let us do that. Encourage our teachers. I hope all of them participate and get back to us with their feedback. And with this, I once again thank all the resource persons from different departments. We have from uh, youth resource, sports and uh, medical. medical also we have. So thank you very much. This has to be a collective effort. This has to be a convergence. Uh, if we department keep working in silos, there is no end to it. And being human beings, all of us have our own egos also when it comes to the government setup. So let us forget all our egos, come together for our children. And uh, I hope the teachers get benefited out of it and th through the teachers, children get benefited out of this training. Thank you uh, virtually for organizing this, organizing this and wish you all the best and all the best to all the resource persons also. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for the words of encouragement and sharing your wisdom to our group of employees and to all of us. Once again, thank you, sir. Uh, now, I will have a privilege to introduce our uh, resource persons of this virtual training. First of all, we have uh, Sir William Koso. Presently, he is nodal official, sports development, youth resource and sports, and AFC A license holders. Next, we have Sir Avisa Chase. He is uh, our physical education teacher at Government Higher Secondary School, Chechama, as well as he is a guest lecturer at NCT Kohima. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Next, we have Sir Lawrence. Lawrence, K. Lawrence, yoga instructor, Department of Health and Family Welfare. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Next, we have Sir Marimba our physical education teachers from Government High School, Akka Haido, from Jinibuto. He is also a master degree holder. Next, we have Sir Tewusatu Dole, a master degree holder from physical education. He is presently a physical education teacher at Rizakri Government Higher Secondary School, Kohima. And the last, we have who has missed our program this evening. We have Simati Puleno Nika. She is our uh, uh, Sipak Takro instructor from Youth Resource and Sports. She has been represented our, st our state as a player and as well as she has been as a national Indian coach to five, six different countries. And she has bring many medals to our state. So I hope let us, uh, all of them 
and we choose the right person for the right discipline. So uh, uh, let us hope that this virtual training will be benefited to all the teachers as well as true teachers. This can be passed to our students. And in the end of the day, I just want to thank, especially our speaker of the day, Sir Shanavas, for his time and his wisdom. And to thanks to our director, Sir Ontongo, to our additional director, Sir Razusi, and to all the senior officers who are present here. And to our resource person, as our sir said, wish you a thank you and wish you all the best in your recording. And to our Samagra, the founder of our this program, we, we will be, we say a big thank you to you and we'll be looking forward in your, uh, to our partnership in our futures to come also. And to media for the coverage, we hope that tomorrow at least we will see one article from you, we'll be expecting from you, and to the technical team for your wholeheartedly support. I think this, though it is uh, new to all of us, your team has been already been engaged for months. So I think this, through you people, we also will be benefited from, from all of, uh, for us. And a big thank you to everyone who has been made this program a success with that we come to the end of our program. We have arranged a little light refreshment. Let us all join together for that, and then our recording will start. Thank you, sir.